You tuned in to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And in today's lesson, we're going to get into some triangle geometry. All right. Now, triangle geometry dealing with a word problem. All right. So let's take a look. Now, the first thing we always want to do is want to read the problem and understand the information that's given to us within the problem. All right. So this word problem says precise cut lawn care which is an actual business, by the way, located down in Baltimore. You can hit them up for your lawn care needs, um, snow removal, anything like that. It's owned by a good brother that I went to high school with way back in the day. So check them out. Precise cut lawn care. Cuts the grass at Garvey Park, right? Shout out to Marcus Garvey. Four times each month, all right? So you got a company, cuts grass at a park, and matter of fact, I, I didn't say this yet, but this triangle right here represents the aerial view of the park. So the park is shaped like a triangle, a right triangle, in fact, right? All right, that's the aerial view of the park. So keep that in mind, too. The question is, how many square yards of grass will be cut each month? Now, again, they're not just going to cut the grass one time. They're actually going to cut the grass four times in one month. So they're probably cutting it like every weekend. You know, it's a lot of grass and the grass must be, must be growing pretty fast. You know what I'm saying? So a couple of things to think about. Um, how many square yards? How are we going to figure this out? Now, square yards. What does that mean? Like, what are we trying to figure out? Are we trying to figure out the perimeter of this triangle? Are we trying to figure out the volume of that triangle? Can we figure out the volume of a two-dimensional shape? Are we trying to figure out the area of the triangle? Now, we know that we're trying to figure out the area. And how do we know that? Because of this term right here, square yards. Whenever you encounter a problem that discusses square anything, square yards, square feet, square inches, square miles, we're talking about area. That's what we're talking about. So square any unit, square of a unit, that's talking about area. Now, if I know that, now, that tells me or indicates to me what type of formula I need. Now, I look at this and I say, okay, this is a triangle. And then I know I need the area. So what I'm thinking about is, okay, what is the formula for the area of a triangle? The formula for the area of a triangle is this. Area equals one half times the base times the height. I'm looking for this right here, the number that's in place of A. right? I'm trying to figure that out. I can use this formula to do that. Now, I need to know what B is. Now, I mentioned earlier, B is the base, right? The base of the triangle. So in this case, the base of the triangle is going to be your horizontal dimension of the triangle, right? So this B right here, this is B. So from here to here is your B. And you see it's 300 yards. H is the height. It's just what it sounds like. It's basically like how tall this triangle is, right? So this is H right here. The vertical dimension of the triangle, never the slanted dimension, not the slanted dimension, but the vertical dimension. And let me also say this too. The way that I know that this is vertical is because this is a 90 degree angle or a right angle. Now, in order for this to be a 90 degree angle, it must intersect with a horizontal line. So if this is a vertical line, this must be a horizontal line. And since that's the base, this must be a vertical height. So keep that in mind too when you see a problem like this. All right, so now I'm trying to figure out what A is. So now I need to start replacing these letters with numbers because I do know the value of those numbers. So I got A is equal to one half times B, but instead of B, I can substitute 300 yards, right? In the place of B because B or the base is 300 yards. So I'm multiplying. So I put parentheses to kind of show the separation between these two numbers, one half and 300. And the same thing with H. H is the height. The height is 50. So I'm replacing the H with a 50. And I want to emphasize that whenever we're doing problems that involve, you know, you, the use of formulas, we're always going to replace the letters with numbers. That's an integral step in the process. We're going to look for the, look for the values in the word problem and then figure out what letters in the formula I'm going to replace. All right. So now it's time to do some multiplication. One half times 300 times 50. Now, what I could do is this. Um, I could do one half times 50, right? 
I could jump over to 300, do one half times 50 real quick, right? Because multiplication is commutative. It doesn't matter what order you do the multiplication in. So I could do it like this. I could treat it like 50 divided by 2. One half times 50 is the same thing as doing 50 divided by 2, right? So I'm really doing 2 divided by 2, which is 1, and 50 divided by 2, which is 25. And actually, what I just did is something called cross-canceling, where you basically divide each number in the diagonal, right, um, by the greatest common factor between these two numbers. So the greatest common factor between 2 and 50 is 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 50 divided by 2 is 25, right? That's, that's another way to do the problem, right? So now I'm left with 1 times 300 times 25. 1 times 300 is just 300. Now I got to figure out what's 300 times 25. Now I could go grab my calculator and just do that, but I don't want to do that. I could do that off the top of the head. What I could do is I could just act like this is not a 300 and this is just a 3. Temporarily, I could act like that. And then I would do 3 times 25. Now I know that 3 times 25 is 75. And then since I temporarily dropped these zeros off, I can add the zeros back now, and I get 7,500. 7,500 square yards, right? Now, that's how much grass is in this triangular shape, which represents the shape of Garvey Park, right? 7,500 square yards, or 7,500 square yards. Now, we have to answer the question correctly, though, because we don't want to just stop right here and say, okay, cool, I, I used the formula, I got the answer, I'm done. We're not done. You know why we're not done? Because the question says, how many square yards of grass will be cut each month? But prior to that, it also said that the grass is not getting cut one time in a month. The grass is actually getting cut four times. So since the grass is getting cut four times, we got to take this amount and multiply it by four. Multiply it by four. So we're going to do 7,500 times four which is going to equal 30,000 square yards. And if you want to do that mentally, uh, one way to do it is I would do 7,000. I would, I would separate the 7,000 from the 500. I would do 7,000 times 4. And then I would say, well, I know 7 times 4 is 28. So 7,000 times 4 is 28,000. Then I would do 500 times 4, which would be 2,000. So I'm looking at 28,000 plus 2,000. I know that 28 plus 2 is 30. So therefore, 28,000 plus 2,000 is going to be 30,000. So that's how many square yards of grass is going to get cut every every month. If they do this yard work, well, actually, this is more the yard work. This is landscaping. This is this is major. This is heavy duty work, right? That's what's gonna. That's what we're dealing with. 30,000 square yards. All right. Now, just to recap briefly, we have to read the word problem. Pull out the important information. Look at the diagram if we're given the diagram, right? Like we are right here. Also think about what formula I'm going to use. Because in math, there's a whole lot of formulas. Now, our job is to be able to understand which formula I'm going to use at which time. So in this case, we're looking for the area. The reason I know we're looking for the area is because the problem talks about square yardage. Square yardage. So when we talk about square units, we're dealing with area, right? We're not dealing with perimeter. We're not dealing with volume. Um or anything else, right? We're dealing with area. And we gotta know the formula for area of a triangle because that's another thing. Different shapes have different formulas for area. A rectangle has a different formula for area. A circle has a different formula for area. A trapezoid has a different formula for area. You know what I mean? So that's something, just something for us to think about. And now your job is to go and do practice and practice more problems like this where you have to use, have to pull information out of a word problem and also use the formulas as needed, all right? Now, if you're not currently subscribed to the YouTube channel, please go ahead and hit that button, subscribe to the channel. Also, share this video with as many people as you can. Let people know what we're doing at all this map, especially right about now. As I record this video, it's early 2022, when it's still in the pandemic, right? Um, a lot of schools are closing down, not closing, but converting to virtual, right? So people need math support. People need online math support because they're not going to be in the class with their teachers. All right. As I always say, do remember, there's all this math all around you. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Peace.